will go for the next scenario. Mm -hmm. So here it's a 32 year old uh, G2P1L1, previous is to preterm delivery. Now 28 weeks of gestation, uh, you have gestational diabetes mellitus on insulin OHA, gestational hypertension, she has uh, PIH also, gestational hypertension also and with complaints of uh, bleeding PV and lower abdominal pain. Here you can see that the BP is high, uh, preeclampsia is there with a contraction uh, bleeding through the hose and the cervix is only 3 centimeters dilated, 2 centimeters long, head high uh, and uh, ultrasound shows uh, 28 weeks, cephalic, 1 kg, placenta, fundo anterior, AFI 7, BPP good, no evidence of abruption. Okay. Uh, what is your plan of management? See, yeah. here it has gone up to 28 yeah, weeks. 28 now. weeks, actually. Yeah. That's, and there are a lot of things. See, whenever you look, it will never be a clean case of a preterm labor. Many times we see situations like the way Ashwit has projected. Now, first of all, I must control a BP. Let me not forget that. So, mm -hmm. everything I should do at zero hours. Zero hours means at the time of admission. So, I'll have to check her BP. You'll have to give her a BP chart, control her BP, give her anti uh, hypertensis, which I will not talk about. Then uh, will you do, and I will do all the uh, investigations for hypertension. That's one. Second is I will uh, do a diabetic control also. A GRBS monitoring and all that and see that uh, diabetes is under control. Mm -hmm. Then I might give her in this patient, I might give mm -hmm. an antibiotic prophylaxis for GRBS for this patient because she is getting into labor anytime she might deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, looking at her cervix, it is three centimeters and um, uh, the, she might get into labor. I will give her tocolytics. Um, I will try, but if, if I do not succeed, I may not give the tocolytics also because I'm got a whether it may not respond. But if at all I give it, I may give it only for the antenatal steroids action for 48 hours. Then I will give a neuroprotection. Ashwat was asking about new, this patient, I will give for neuroprotection. And then maybe if I've given the neuroprotection, I'm thinking now look at that liker also, liker is less. So I'm not very happy about that also. So am I going to, con maybe because of her hypertension, I do not know. But if I find that they are, I, this thing is less and if I find maybe I might even plan an induction after I've given all these things. And I, But I will make sure that I'm doing it at a center where there's a good NICU facility. Very, very important. And yeah, I will also see to it that I do a continuous CTG monitoring throughout because one very important thing to remember is can they deliver vaginally? Uh, that is what I was this? going to ask. Yeah, they can deliver. But remember one thing. If the CTG is not good, you have got no right to give her a vaginal delivery because um, uh, um, uh, a hypoxic preterm baby is a very bad uh, prognosis. That you must always remember. If you can give a, a baby that is good, they are, and then you can always give her a vaginal delivery. That is, that's why I said you must do a continuous CTG monitoring. CTG monitoring will basically, students, what it really tells you is, can this baby withstand a good vaginal delivery? If the CTG is good, that means you can go ahead. If the uh, CTG shows some changes, better to do a section. Uh, in, in, in this patient, having so many comorbidities. Otherwise, oh. for the take home for the students is that there is no direct indication for cesarean in a preterm labor. Only for obstetric indications, only you will be. Yeah. But there are situations like this where we may have so many other things like PIH, preeclampsia, then uh, see uh, Doppler changes and all these things are there as Madam correctly told. If there are any chance of birth asphyxia and the CTG is abnormal, then you don't have to wait. You can do a section. Otherwise, you don't have to wait.